Hi everyone, I'm very excited. I have been going to yoga and Pilates for long enough that now my body is finally craving it in the mornings and if I don't go in the morning then my body is usually like a little bit stiff or wishing that I had gotten some movement in. So that's been something that I feel like I've been working towards and I'm always trying to develop new habits and sometimes whenever you're developing a new habit, it feels like the slowest process to feel like you've really integrated it into who you are. So a lot of that feels like, oh, I, you have to really push yourself to get up and do the habit, to get up and do the habit. And at what point are you going to start seeing the results? And at what, what point do you feel like it is a part of who you are? And although I'm not by any means fantastic at yoga or Pilates, and there's always room for improvement, I really feel like this is a milestone in the fact that my body is now wanting to do it. Whereas before, it was always a bit of a struggle to get up and go. Hi friends, I'm back from yoga and I am back at my desk. Before I take a shower, I'm going to hair oil and do my hair oil routine, leave it in for a couple hours and then I'm gonna shower and you know get everything out at once. Uh, before I do that, I typically derma roll whenever I'm doing a hair oiling routine. So I sprayed down my roots with hypochlorous acid just because I don't want to get any bacteria. You know, I want my scalp to be clean before I derma roll always. And before I do that, I'm going to do a scalp massage because I've been putting a lot of effort into my fascia massage practices. So yesterday I did a really deep release in my trapezius and I'm trying to commit myself to doing that three times a day. I try to do a scalp massage for at least five minutes a day. And overall I work on loosening all the muscles in my chest and in my neck and keeping everything nice and relaxed. So that's why I look greasy and I'm in my robe. But I have a client that just reached out. I've worked with him many times before, and he always has these relatively large batch orders. But this is by far the largest batch order that he's sent me. It looks to be about 20 videos, and the total word count comes to around 59,000 words. So this is where the pricing and voiceover can get a little bit confusing and there's a lot of things that you're trying to balance. And he made it clear that because it's such a large batch, he's hoping that I can really give him the best price possible. He's a really great client. He never gives me pushback, but all clients have a budget and it's just the nature of the industry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look back at the pricing that we've done for previous batches and kind of get a sense of how many for this specifically it's easiest for me to base it on the price per word am i charging 45 cents a word which i'm not that's what i charge for much smaller projects am i charging 13 cents a word i want to make sure that i'm being fair to myself fair to the prices that you'll find in the industry but also try to get him the best deal possible so that's what i will be doing All right, so hair oiling, check. 
I did more auditions and got a quote to the client, so we'll see what they say. And now it's time to take the naan bread that I'm making out of the oven for rising and see how it's looking. A shame, think something new under the sun. Mm. You can't take back some things you already done, done. No. You blame things that you do on somebody else. Uh, no. But they all see, but they all see is you need help. Okay, back to work. So I came to an agreement with that large black batch client for his project. He needs it within two weeks, so I need to record basically a medium-sized novel within two weeks' time. So that's going to take up quite a bit of my time, which means that I need to get my video game out the door today to ensure that everything is well managed and that I'm leaving space for everything that I need to do without overstressing myself. So, um, I'm going to do that today. There's also a client that I'm working on the final leg of a project with. This client has a hard time paying me on time to the point where he'll go months without paying me or answering my emails or follow-ups. And then whenever he needs his next recording done, only then will he pay me because he needs something else. So the way that I navigated that was I asked for half the payment up front. Um, and he also didn't process the payment until after the deadline. So it's kind of like a little bit of a give and take. It's a little, you know, um, it doesn't upset me. It's part of the process and he's a nice guy, but he just has a hard time with that kind of responsibility, I guess. So what ended up happening was he didn't pay me the first half like he was supposed to. I went ahead and recorded anyways. Now we're past the deadline of when he needed the recordings by, so now he's more motivated to pay me. But I updated the invoice for the full invoice saying, hey, everything's done, pay me everything in full. He didn't want to do that. He wants to still have leverage to sometimes over ask for the work that he's requested, which sometimes happens. But um, so what we settled on was he pays me the first half. I release 75% of the work to him so he can review it and feel like I'm not going to disappear. And then once that's done, he will pay me the second half. And then only then will I release the final portion of the recordings. So it's not ideal. I like to function more based off of a trust kind of system, but everybody is a little bit different. And he was willing to work with me on this. I know that he's, I hope that he has nothing but good intentions in working with me and I know that they're on an extremely limited budget but uh, that's how it goes sometimes so focus on what I have today you know always put my best foot forward with everybody that I can and also make sure that I'm setting boundaries and standards and very aware of how all of my clients are different from each other so let's get into it I feel so good about my work-life balance this year and it's taken me a long journey to get to this point and it's hard to really pinpoint when certain things changed at certain times but I, looking back, I feel how transformative the last couple years have been for me. I used to swing like a pendulum between being so busy and overwhelmed with the amount of work that I had to do but also feeling like I couldn't turn anything down because you need to prepare for your dry seasons whenever you're running your own business, and then swing into the dry seasons and have this underlying constant anxiety that what if things never pick up again? And it almost seems like the moment I just let go and I stopped caring and I decided that I was just going to try my best to enjoy every single day as it comes and appreciate everything as it comes, then it's almost like my work-life balance found its own equilibrium and the opportunities that came in came in a much more balanced fashion. So part of it was me deciding that I was just going to try to live that way and then it was almost like the universe responded 
and gave me a very manageable schedule. I got a new phone. I love astrology. My life's obsession has been self-improvement and introspection and understanding my own human nature and the human nature of those around me and how all of our chemistries mix and influence each other. And astrology has been this mirror that I've been able to hold up to myself and see myself more clearly and understand myself at a deeper level. So today I'm learning about Jupiter in all of the houses. Jupiter is such a fun planet. It's one of my favorite planets. It's very lucky. It brings good fortune. It brings protection. It's always excited about what's around the corner. It's a very expansive planet. So I'll read a little bit of that now. Needless to say, the house in the chart containing Jupiter is an area of life in which we require a great deal of room to grow and explore. It is where we are not content with that which is routine and humdrum, but rather where we are propelled to experience life more fully and completely. We're not necessarily unhappy with what we already have in that domain, but we still want more and there always seems further to go. Jupiter is ultimately more interested in what might be around the corner than the reality at hand. His presence in a house makes us hopeful, positive, and expectant in that area of life. As if with him there, we are charmed and protected. 